Now, did I mention that the best live rock album ever just got better? Yes, Live at Leeds has just been reissued with eight new songs. The Who played that concert on Valentine's Day, 25 years ago. Isn't that just amazing? Now, stay tuned. More from The Who and stories from Keith Moon right after this. I'm Forbes Riley, Off the Record. It's Keith Moon, Off the Record. Keith Moon hosted a radio show in England. Yes, the BBC actually gave him some airtime. Once again, the sun rises over the passionate prairie, and old Mother Nature spreads the colors of her paint box before our eyes, as she has done throughout the countless millions of years since before man walked this earth. The pattern of life on the prairie has remained unchanged throughout the centuries. And every morning, old Papa Gopher pushes his nose out of his hole to sniff the morning air. Uh-oh, here comes a cougar. Don't come too close, Mr. Cougar, says old Papa Gopher. But hush, there is a staring in the long grass. Who is this friendly little fellow? Hello, mates. It's me, Keith Moon of the Ooh. No, don't move. I've got a gun. First, a word to all of you who wrote to say you caught last week's show. Keep taking the pills, give up drinking for three weeks, and come back on Thursday for the results of the lab test. Uncle Ernie was, was really, it came about when the London Symphony Orchestra were doing uh, the show at the Rainbow. And Ringo had been on the Lou Reisner album uh, as Uncle Ernie. And so when, when it came to the stage show, Ringo said he didn't want to do the stage show. Uh, it, the, the load fell on me and it said, I said, is it costume? He said, well, do whatever you like. So I've just made up the costume. You know, and uh, Dougal, my driver, and I had great fun going up and down Charing Cross Road looking for anything in surgical pink. We spent hours, uh, and all that, you know, I'd be over one side, outside the lots of fun surgical shop, and Dougal would scream, there's a jock strapping surgical pink over here. And I'd hurtle across Charing Cross Road. And I got, eventually, you know, we had this mountain of surgical pink material, which we used for the, for the rainbow. And I kept it for Australia. And when I was there, when I was in Australia, we did the concert, we did two concerts there. And it was set in the place, like, in a, like a, I mean, the Australians described it, like a jewel, like a jewel set in the middle of a park. An absolutely wonderful exam, and, and you know, it's this awful sort of race course in the middle of a load of fields, you know, and it was like, you know, a jewel in a wonderful setting, and it's right carsy, right, stuck in a mud flat. So we're out there, we've got two shows to do. I'm dressed up in surgical pink underneath this raincoat. Now, halfway through the, sh uh, the we did the, the two performances, I did the one show, and we had a break of half an hour while the audience were going out and the new lot coming in. I'd steamed out the caravans where, where we were changing. And, you know, the caravans were parked near the ticket place. And I was going across and I was running across all these mud flats. And the, the raincoat came open, revealing all this surgical pink underwear. And I was arrested by the, the Melbourne police as a, a pervert. And I kept trying to tell them, you see, I said, I said, well, this isn't, you know, it's not really my street clothes. None of them wanted to touch me. Uh, just covered in, like, covered in mud and filth and like, just, yeah, horrid, to totally horrid. So they took me to the police van and they had to send for the producer of the show to 
bail me out, you know, to say that this was, actually was a stage costume and that this is not how he normally dresses. Because when I came out in what I usually wear, I was very nearly arrested again. His enthusiasm for life, for conversation and, and lusty drinking is well over my limit. And so in order to be with him and be good company for Keith, you've both got to go halfway. In other words, he's got to calm down a bit and you've got to freak out a bit. And the great thing about somebody like Keith, you see, is, is that he happens to be incredibly funny. I mean, he's an incredibly entertaining bloke. So, I mean, you're never bored when you're with him. And so you never consequently think of the fact that, well, you know, maybe I don't really feel comfortable. I mean, I'm sure that a lot of people don't feel at ease with Keith. But then on the other hand, he's not, he doesn't try to make people feel at ease. Every day I, can make you. I wrote a song uh, called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which ended up as a, a B-side of one of the singles, uh, which I wrote about Keith, who I've always considered to be two separate personalities, uh, like two separate people, uh, one of which I know, and one of which I don't know quite so well, you know, and uh, sometimes try and avoid. He seems to be like made of rubber, he, he bends into different shapes. You can always tell who he's been with the day before by the way he talks and the way he acts. I suppose, in a way, uh, when we're both in the right mood, we're the most friendly of the group to each other. When we're in the right mood. <laughs> Keith is unbelievable. He lives a lifetime a day. He's the funniest person you could meet. And then when you get to know him, if you ever get to know him. He can also be the most tragic person. He's, he's the most eccentric, the most generous, also probably the most selfish, in a way that only probably the who would know about. He's the most loving, the most hateful. <laughs> I mean, he really is, he's got his total opposites. He can have you in tears of laughter one minute and then, you know, breaking your heart the next. That's what he's like, that's, that's Moon. In a funny sort of way, he's a very sad sort of character. And yet in another way, he's a very happy sort of character. What can you say? I, I think the thing about Moon is he'll never find his way of life in this world as we know it. I don't think nothing to satisfy him anyway. Roger expressed some concern over the uh, tax situation in England and said that he might be thinking of moving. Um, John, the same. Pete said, uh, and he'd, he'd remain a true blue anglophile, he was going to stay where he was. I imagine that the Who, ten years from now, will be working together, off and on, um, doing I... I have no idea what. Ten years from now, I'll be nearly 40. How am I going to get a wheelchair down the stairs of the whiskey? <laughs> <laughs>